Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 8, New Living Translation says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. This is important. This is important. We're going to come back to this scripture, so please take note of it. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Pray in the Spirit at all times. This is the only way to pray. Hallelujah. This is the acceptable way to pray. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Ah, somebody has just died. We are about to pray. Pray in the Spirit. Somebody got me angry. I want to pray. Pray in the Spirit. At all times and on every occasion. Then he says, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all the believers everywhere. Hallelujah. So last week we started to talk about when we pray. And if you can remember, we, we, we listed a number of things that happen when we pray. Okay, let's quickly remind ourselves of those, of those things. We said when we pray, we grow in intimacy with God. We said when we pray, we grow in our spiritual capacity. We said when we pray, negative emotions like fear and anxiety give way to peace and boldness. We said that when we pray, we gain access to God's perspective to, on issues so that we can respond correctly. Hallelujah. We gain what? God's perspective on issues so that we can respond correctly. Because you see, what happens is not as important as how we respond. And most of the time, God does not respond to the event. God responds to your response. Do you understand now? So you need to know God's perspective so that you can respond correctly. There was a turn in the flesh given the apostle and his first response was to go to, go to God in prayer and his prayer point was take it away. Then God responded to his response and then he gained God's perspective and he said what? Now I glory in weakness. Are we getting this? So the turn in the flesh was not taken away, but now he is responding differently to the turn of the flesh because he has God's perspective. When we pray, we gain access to God's perspective so that we can respond correctly. And lastly, we said that when we pray, we make things happen on earth through the power of God. Now, this last one is the famous one. This last one is the popular one. As a matter of fact, over 60% of the time when people pray, this is the only one they fixate on. Changing things, changing circumstances, turning things around by the power of God. And let me say this to you, it's available to us, but it is just one or five. And sometimes you miss out on the rest because you fixate on one. But that's a conversation for another day. This morning, I want to focus on what makes prayer work. Now, this is what I need you to put at the back of your mind. When my prayer is working, one or some or all of all these factors we've listed is the result. When my prayer is working, I grow in intimacy with God. I grow in spiritual capacity. Negative emotions like fear and anxiety give way to peace and boldness. In other words, sometimes the situation has not changed, but my perspective has changed. My prayer has worked. The situation has not changed, but now I've got boldness to face life. My prayer has worked. Are you getting this right now? But what are those factors that make prayer work? Now you want to pay attention. This is crucial. Number one, authentic faith. Authentic faith as opposed to religious sentiments. So you hear people say stuff like, I've been praying about it and God has not answered my prayer. And what you have been doing is expressing religious sentiments and not faith. God does not respond to feelings. God responds to faith. Oh, but the Bible says he is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Exactly. He is touched. He understands. But he only moves by faith. Do you understand what I'm saying now? God knows what you are going through. God understands what you are going through, but God responds to faith. Do you understand what I'm saying now? God responds to faith. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. There was a young man who came to church so many years ago. Ah, he was in a tough place. He needed money and all of that. So we gave him money. Then he came a second time. Ah, thank you for the other time. But then he was still in trouble. He still needed money. And that second time he said he had gotten a job. That he had gotten a driving job. 
but that he needed money to process his driver's license. So that second time, we gave him more money. But that day, I told him, I said, you don't come to church. He said, yes. Which church do you attend? He said, I won't mention one funny church. When I say funny church, believe you me, one funny church somewhere. I told him, that church is not going to do you any good. That your area where you live, there's somebody I know who pastors a church there. I recommended a church, okay, the pastor of the church is my friend, and I told him, go to that church, mention my name to that pastor, and tell him you are from me, okay? They will help you, not just by giving you money. There are things you need to know. There is teaching you need to receive that will transform your life. He said, yes, thank you very much, and then he left. And so many months later, he came back. What happened to the driving job? Uh, he told one story or the other. So what's the problem? He was in problem again, and he needed money. And I looked him dead in the face, and I told him, we are not going to give you money. Because the last time you came, I told you this was the last time. I recommended you to go to a particular person, mention my name. Have you gone there? He said, no. Do I understand what he's going through? Can I understand his feeling? Am I moved? No. So you see, many of the things you are talking to God about, he has a lot to say about. And you get to the point where God says, I am not going to spoon feed you. I am not going to continue to tolerate you. I need you to make a change. That is what, listen, many of us are asking for God to move and God says, I don't want to move, I want to talk. Hello? You are saying, Father, deliver me. Father, deliver me. God says, I want to strengthen you because you need to go through this to become another man. And as long as you are praying a prayer of deliverance where God is trying to give you strength to go through, it will look like God is not answering your prayer. And a lot of times it's because you are not in faith. So let's look at the word of God. Mark chapter 11. I want to build a case, okay? From time to time, I tap into the fact that my parents sent me to two schools to study law. I want to build a case this morning. Follow me closely. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. It says, have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea. If anyone, so this has nothing to do with spiritual capacity. This has nothing to do with pedigree. This has nothing to do with knowledge. If anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in their heart, but believe that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Can you see the condition? It is anybody. What do they have to do? Cry about it? No. Say to the mountain, move. But at the point of saying, there's no doubt in their heart. They believe that what they say will come to pass. On that condition, it will be done for them. Verse 24 now says, therefore I tell you. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. And it will be yours. You remember that, my illustration? Whatever you believe in, I'm praying here. Whatever I pray, I ask for in prayer, at this point, I have received it. Then I continue to journey. And I get here. It will be mine. This is the problem. This is five years later. I've been seeking the face of God. And there are some people in 2023, nothing is waiting for you. Because every step of the way, you kept believing you will receive it instead of believing you have received it. And you are mustering a lot of emotions and wondering why it is not happening. And the Bible is saying you are not fulfilling the conditions. You are believing to get what you are supposed to believe to have gotten. If you believe you have received it, your confession will be different. Your behavior will be different. And this is what the Bible is saying. You don't hope for what you are supposed to have faith for. Hallelujah. So, F.F. F. Boswat said, Faith begins where the will of God is known. Follow me closely. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Kenneth Copeland said, you cannot have faith beyond your knowledge. This is important. If your prayers are going to be answered, it is not because you are desperate, it is because you believe that you have received. Faith begins where the will of God is known. You cannot have faith 
beyond your knowledge. So to be effective in prayer, you want to be what? You want to be steeped in the word of God. You want to be in the word of God. So this is what I say. So I'm putting myself in their WhatsApp group. An effective prayer life is built on the foundation of a practical understanding of God's word. An effective prayer life. It's okay if my wife is the only one getting it. It's okay. It's okay. It means my life, my destiny is secure. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, get it to. Tell your neighbor, get it to, get it to, get it to. An effective prayer life is built on the foundation of a practical understanding of God's word. So this is my advice. You should invest twice the amount of time you spend in prayer in studying God's word and listening to teaching. Because if you don't understand the word of God, when you pray, you will be expressing religious sentiments and not faith. So that time of prayer, I will advise you to spend more time praying in tongues, worshipping and meditating upon the word of God till you gain clarity over the matter. Instead of asking God for stuff that you don't understand. Did you come to church this morning? What makes prayer work? Authentic faith, not religious sentiments. Number two, what makes prayer work? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Listen to this. When we pray in the name of Jesus, God responds to Jesus, not us. The name of Jesus is not a postage stamp. Amen? You know, some people pray in the name of Jesus and they feel like the name of Jesus and amen are just things that you just stamp on the envelope of your prayer as it's going to heaven. You need to understand the basis upon which God is responding is not because of you praying, it is because of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me give you an illustration. It is like cashing a check from a bank where you don't have an account. So if I go to, um, Dr. Banji, which account do you use? Which bank do you use again? <laughs> Standard Chattard. If I go to, I've never been to a branch of Standard Chattard Bank before. I don't know what their banking hall looks like. I'm telling you the truth. But if Dr. Banji gives me a check, say for five million, he doesn't spend small money. I will go to Standard Chattered like I own the place. I will present the check. All they need to confirm is my identity, not my financial standing. And they will pay me the money as if it is my money based on the relationship that they have with him. Do you understand? When we pray in the name of Jesus, we don't get what we deserve. We get what he deserves. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you some, some strange verses of scripture. Strange in one of them, I was still really meditating upon it this morning and I said, Jesus, this is strange. But let's, let's look at some of them. John chapter 14, verse 12 to verse 14. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. Look at verse 13. And I will do whatever you ask in my name. Not whatever you ask. In my name. So that the Son may bring glory to the Father. When I pray in the name of Jesus, God is not answering the prayer because of me. It is so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. Hallelujah. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son will bring glory to the Father. Now look at verse 14. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. That was the point I said, Jesus, wait. Asking you is okay now. Why do I have to ask you in your name? Hello. So in other words, the miracle is not in your asking. The miracle is in the name. Jesus is saying, when my name is presented, I respond differently. You can ask me, look at it there. You can ask me for anything in my name. So asking me is not the secret. And when he taught it to the disciples, they understood. Because I'm going to show you verses of scripture where they went out and practiced exactly what he said. He said, whatever. In, there's something about the name of Jesus. Paul the apostle was the one who caught the revelation. But see, what I love about spiritual things is sometimes you can live in the reality of things you don't understand. 
Because later on in Philippians, Paul the apostle was able to say that God graced him up and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. See, but Peter did not understand that. Peter just knew. See, there's something in the name. Hallelujah. Acts of Apostles chapter 3 and verse 16. Acts of, Acts of Apostles chapter 3 and verse 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see unknown was made strong. By f- not just faith in Jesus, faith in the name. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, I believe, I believe in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Say it again, I believe, I believe in the name of Jesus. It says, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him. Can you see the two now? What's the first condition? Authentic faith. What's the next one? The name. And here it separated the two. One is not enough. You have to have faith in God. And you have got to know how to use the name of Jesus. Okay, the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him. As you all can see, let's jump to chapter 4 and verse 8 to 10. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. The name of Jesus. You know in Mark chapter 16 the Bible talks about these signs shall follow them that believe. That's the way we like to read it, right? And so one day my pastor was teaching us. I mean teaching us and he said, but originally there were no punctuations there. So was Jesus talking about believe or was Jesus saying these signs shall follow them that believe in my name? They will drive out demons. Because there's something called faith in the name. Hallelujah. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they will drive out demons. They take up deadly things, they will not hurt them. They will place their hands on the sick. They don't even now have to shout the name anymore. There's something about believing in the name. What makes prayer work? Number one, authentic faith. Number two, the name of Jesus. Number three, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit. First John chapter five and verse 14 to verse 15. Let's build my case again. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask him anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have, we have what we asked of him. So the reason why whatever you ask in prayer, believe you received, the basis upon which you can believe you have received is because you know it is his will. God does not meet needs. God responds to his will. If the, move, if the greatest move of God is where the greatest human need is, then God should be in India, then in Nigeria. Amen? Amen? The way we pray in this country, if it is just about shouting, if it is just about presenting our needs to God, I don't think, I'm not sure, I'm not certain there is a nation. Okay, I think they said South Americans take these things to another level too. But I'm not sure there are people that pray more than us in Nigeria. Ordinary 20 year olds, 19 year olds, 14 year olds, praying for 12 hours, 14 hours. And their life is not moving around, moving forward. Pastor, why are you talking like this? I'm telling you the truth. And it is because people don't understand prayer. Prayer is not just about, you know, you are desperate for something and then you go to God and how... Is it because the reason why anybody will spend 12 hours or 14 hours praying is because you believe in what will happen when you spend time praying. And I'm not knocking that. The challenge is that a lot of people do it for the wrong reasons. The only reason why you spend hours praying is because you want to fellowship with God. Full stop. It's not so good. God can. Listen, the Bible says that God knows your needs before you pray. The Bible says, fear not, O little flock. It is the will of your father to give you a car. No. The kingdom. Are you listening to this? The Bible said, while Peter yet spake these words, the words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that will. He is more willing. I've told you before, when I look into my Bible, I see people that God runs after. Not as much as people running after God. Moses was just doing his work. It was God that went to look for him. 
Solomon gave offering. He didn't tie anything to the offering. He didn't label his offering. It was God that said, ask me for anything. Mary just wanted to have a small wedding and marry her. It was God that went seeking her. So you see this God that people are seeking and they are not finding. I don't understand. And the reason why you seemingly seek God and not find him is because you are seeking him for yourself. You are not seeking his will. And if, if truth be told, when you approach him in prayer, you are not even confident. Because the basis of confidence is the knowledge of his will. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 to 12. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. So you are asking God for things, but God is saying there are things prepared. Hallelujah. Now, between you and God, who is better at preparing things? Amen. The God that designed the human system, the God that created the heavens and the earth, you think you can fathom anything? You can, you can come up with an idea? You can come up with a strategy better than God? And God says, I have things prepared. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. Okay, I have it prepared. Listen to this. When you step into the will of God, you lack competition. Because what God has prepared for you, people cannot pick it by brainstorming. Oh, I wish you came to church this morning. What no eye has seen, not what no ear has heard, what has not entered the heart of man, yet they are things prepared for, of God by, for those who love him. I don't know about you. When I go into God's presence, I want to know the things prepared. Some of us are full of our issues and our needs. We are not bothered about the things prepared. <laughs> Let's move on this morning. The things prepared for those who love him. Look at verse 10. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12 is my favorite. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand, not so that we may shake. There's nothing wrong with shaking. There's nothing wrong with falling under the anointing. But there's something greater than that. It is called understanding. The objective of the Holy Spirit, the reason for the Holy Spirit is that we may understand. Not that we may bamboozle people. I read a testimony of somebody on, on social media. He, he, they had a service in their church. He said, and his pastor, you know, laid hands. He said, for whatever reason, he was the only person that did not fall under the anointing that day. And you know how it can feel? I've been there before. When you look to your left, they are falling down. You look to your right. You'll be wondering whether you have a demon that is resisting the power of God. The irony of such thinking. If I should carry a demon, should I not be the one that falls first? Because when two powers meet, the lesser power bows. But I used to think like that. This one, I'm not falling. And so this guy said he didn't fall down. But that, that day he believed that he received something. The Bible said the spirit of wisdom rested on Joshua because Moses, the servant of God, had laid hands on him. This guy said, I believed. He said, so after that day, I lived out what pastor taught us. He said, when we came back to church the following week, he thought it was a surprise that I was the only one that had the testimony. Listen, if you fall down and you get up and nothing has changed in your understanding, you just wasted soap money. You just dirtied your clothes for nothing. I know some of you, you think you are cooperating. The hand has not reached you, you are falling already. Okay, and because, you know, people will perceive you as very spiritual. That's why the more you are dramatic about it. I know pastors that like drama too. When they notice that you are cooperating, they spend more time with you. Bring him back, bring him back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, and after service, you are expecting you are special to pastor because you have helped pastor's drama. I'm just deceiving yourself. After three years, when pastor says your life is not moving anywhere, that's it. By all means, if you can't resist the power, fall. But after you wake up, hold the conversation with God. What happened? I need to understand something differently. The Holy Spirit did not come for us to fall down. The Holy Spirit came for us to understand. Now, this is my message. I've got five minutes. Those things that the Holy Spirit helps you to understand, those are the things you should take to God in prayer. So when Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 now says, put it back on the screen. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Let me bust your bubble. He did not say, pray in tongues. Praying in the spirit is not praying in tongues. 
praying in the spirit is praying according to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to pray in the spirit. According to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. As we pray, the Holy Spirit tells us what to say. What scriptures to use. What words to say. Sometimes you want to ask God for something. The Holy Spirit says, praise him for it. That now becomes your prayer. Hallelujah. I'll give you two illustrations. It was in the course of the week. Elsie was leading us in prayer. Towards the end of the prayer, she shared a verse of scripture and told us to make a declaration. As far as she was concerned, she was just leading prayer. The Holy Spirit said to me, there's more to that scripture. That scripture is for Hill City. There's more to that scripture. So I copied it. I shared it with the leaders yesterday. We started making declarations with that scripture yesterday. Listen, that is praying according to the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Somebody listening to me right now, you think your problem is money. If you will hear God, if you will receive the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it will tell you what God wants to talk about so that you can make the right adjustment. Because listen to me, a lot of times it's not your situation that has to change. Sometimes it's your perspective that has to change. And God wants to hold conversations with you. Hallelujah. When we pray in tongues, now watch this. I didn't say don't pray in tongues. When we pray in tongues, after some time, the Holy Spirit brings to our consciousness the will of God. That is what we now pray in understanding. You know the Bible talks about the gift of tongues and interpretation. It is for public ministry. In private prayer, there is also that manifestation. How that as you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit will bring to your consciousness what conversation you are holding with God. Because when you pray in the Spirit, your mind is unfruitful. When your mind is unfruitful, your life does not appreciate it. Listen to me, listen, listen. This kingdom of God, this spiritual life we are living, it is so information-oriented that God says, I don't want to waste time. Document revelation. So right from Moses till John the Revelator, if there was anything that God did, he did not just move, codify my words. Because God is not so, so much interested in doing things for man. God is interested in man becoming like God. Oh boy. Somebody will get that next week. You'll get it. Just get the message, go back and listen to it. You will get it. I learned that one from T.D. Jakes. He shared the revelation. People were not responding properly. He said, no, you will get it when you play the tape over. <laughs> you will get it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 26. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. That is God's objective. That is still God's objective. He looked at Adam and Eve, naked human beings. He said, I have blessed you. I have given you, he gave them raw materials and he called them blessed. Listen to me, God is not glorified when he does things for you. God is glorified when you behave like him. That is why Romans chapter 12 says what? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but allow God, message Bible says, allow God to turn you into another man by changing the way you think. The greatest miracle in your life is not the provision of things, it's a change of mind. So the place of prayer is not where we go to submit our list and then God begins to move. It's not Father Christmas. Even Father Christmas collects money from your parents. Because some people just think God is that ATM where you make withdrawal without deposits. No, he wants to have conversation. He came to Joshua. Moses, my servant is dead. He said, now you rise and lead the people. He said, but this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. Therein shall you meditate day and night. Listen to me. If I can hear God, why should I read a book? No, think about it. You are talking to me now. Why should I read the book of Moses? Just be telling me what to do. You know, sorry. Let me be following. You just be doing. That's what many of us want. And you know, we sing absurd songs like that. Carry me, they go. Jehovah, carry me, they go, they go, they go. Anywhere better day, carry me, they go. That's a hustler's mindset. When you sing those kind of songs, God is not proud of you. Anywhere better day, carry me, they go. Anywhere, God says, see the person I created to do better. So I created you to make the world a better place. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You that you are the light of the world, say, carry me, they go. Jehovah carry me, they go. They just shall make me, know. And shall just carry me anywhere better day. What does that mean? I don't know where it is. Amen. 
What does that mean? I am beggarly. A beggar has no choice anywhere. Short man, as long as better there. Tall man, as long as better there. Uh, America, as long as better. Some people, there is no country you don't have a Nigerian. Anywhere better day. Anywhere better day. But what the Bible says, blessed are those whose trust is in you, who have set their heart on pilgrimage. When they get to the valley of Baca, they will turn it into it. Listen to me. It is not about God changing your situation, but God wants to empower you to change situations. Are we getting this? God wants to empower you to change situations. So 80% of the time, God wants to talk with you. There is a revelation that will hit you. You'll be like, how come I've been thinking like this? And then you begin to do things differently and the earth will respond to you like the earth responds to God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth became without form and void. Okay? And darkness covered the deep. The Bible said the spirit of God. What did God, God said? Let there be light. God wants you to have revelation to the point where you know that for you, talk is not cheap. When you begin to speak, life responds. People respond. You respond. Things come into existence by the power of the words that are coming out of your mouth. Your greatest miracle is not a thing. Your greatest miracle is revelation. Amen? And that's what happens when we pray. Amen. See, from today, I've put in your hands the secret of every time you pray, you get a response. What is the secret? Authentic faith. The name of Jesus. Inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Now, how is this supposed to work? The inspiration of the Holy Spirit will lead you to authentic faith that you release in the name of Jesus. That is why you should spend twice the time that you use in talking to God. Spend it in meditating on his word. Make declaration of his word. Listen to teaching so that your thinking can change. Let God turn you into another man by changing the way you think. You know what that means? It says then you will be able to tell what is the will of God. We are not supposed to pray for God to reveal his will. We are supposed to mature to the point where we are telling people that's the direction, that's where God will have you go. Because you see, our, our, our Bible says that them that are mature are those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. They know the difference between good and evil, right and wrong. It does not come in answer to prayer. It comes by the reason of use. Maturity by reason of use. God will rather build you than bless you. Oh, did I say that? God would rather build you because he has blessed you. The reason why you are praying for God to bless you is because you don't know that you are blessed. Moses is still calling his rod a stick. Amen. Amen. David knew that his catapult was not a toy. <laughs> oh my goodness. If only you know the capacity that you carry. If you know the power of what's in your hand. If you know what you have in the ability to lay hands on stuff. Listen to me. As a believer, you will not be asking yourself, did I marry the wrong person? Am I working the wrong job? Am I in the wrong business? The Bible says you shall be like a tree planted by streams of water. Whatever you do, prosper. You didn't marry the wrong person. You are the wrong person. Uh, did you catch that? You are not working for the wrong organization. You are the wrong person. When you understand that you carry the blessing, if you are in Potiphar's house, everything turns around. If you are in prison, everything turns around. If you are in the palace, everything turns around. Listen, the blessing of God is not location oriented. Because some of you think of until I relocate. And I have not said don't relocate. I'm just telling you like Bishop like Bishop Blessing in the house has said that the lizard in Nigeria cannot become a crocodile in America. Are you listening to me? You have to know the son of whom you are. You have to know the capacity you carry. These are the things that God wants to talk about. Say to your neighbor for me, God is your father and he wants to talk to you. Listen, it's only a sugar daddy that wants to buy you stuff. My time is up. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you for the message we have received. We thank you, Father, because it will not end in information it will not end in inspiration. It will not end, Father, even in throwing up thoughts and sentiments. Father, it ends in transformation. In the name of Jesus, I speak a fresh fire upon every altar represented here. In the name of Jesus, I speak revival into your place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, I declare your fellowship with God uh, picks up speed, picks up intensity. In the name of Jesus, I declare deep dimensions of God you have not seen before. That is what you begin to experience from now on. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, and we worship you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you.